Hello, Cherries fans. Hope you're doing well and welcome. It's time for another Funnel Flashback. Flashback to the days when the nights were young. Flashback when we could do no wrong. No Mr. Tiggs this week, so you're going to have to put up with me, Sam Davis, but I'm delighted to be joined by ex-AFC Bournemouth striking legend, Tony Funnel. Tony, how are you? Very well. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm loving hearing some of these stories through Mr. Tiggs's previous uh, videos about your uh, career. And, you know, we haven't even touched on Bournemouth yet. But, I mean, you know, in previous chats we have. But at this part of your career, you're at Southampton, aren't you? And in the last video, you were talking about trying to get some more money out of Laurie McMenemy. But he <laughs> said no. And yeah. you just said, okay, well, but I was just wondering with regards to that, at what stage did most footballers start to get agents? Because in your era, did any have agents? Possibly maybe a couple, but um, not, not many. And uh, I mean, I must admit, I did get a rise. Mm. So I did get a pay rise. It just, I tried to be sneaky and get a little bit more. But, I think <laughs> <Yeah. a> bit. <laughs> but as I said, at the beginning, all the top stars go up. And as they come down one by one, mm. the pot's getting lower and lower. There's not much left for us lads anyway. So, No, that's right. And uh, you know what? I, I have a feeling that if I was a professional footballer, which, uh, you know, obviously I'm not, um, I, f I would find it really awkward because it's just in my nature. I'd find it awkward to talk about money myself and I would actually prefer an agent to do all the you know, dirty work for me so I could just concentrate on playing football. So, you know, when you were... Uh, asking for more money did you feel a little bit sheepish or you know do you, you know did you think you were being a chancer or did you genuinely feel like you deserved more money i i suppose i was chancing my luck to try to get an extra 10 or 15 pounds mm. a week on my wages um it, it, it didn't happen that was the only time it happened i think really yeah. other than that i i sort of went to a, a club i was offered a wage and i just signed mm. Brilliant. So, yeah, uh, you were at Southampton then, and uh, we've got some photos that uh, we're going to be showing for the show once again. And uh, this is the first one that we've got here. Yeah, the following season, um, after we got promotion, I still played in reserves at the start, and I, I was sub a couple of times. But uh, I did make my debut in the – well, it was the first division, but it's now the Premier Division – Mm. And that first one, that was shortening goal for um, Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a nil-nil draw. And then the other game I played in was against Norwich. And it's funny enough, um, Mr. Tiggs is talking to Kevin Bond today. Mm. And that's Kevin Bond <laughs> trying to get yeah. the ball off me there. Yeah. Look at him there. You know what? We may even have to show him that photo and said that, you know, we chat. I mean, like... What was he like to play against? Yeah, he was a very good player. Um, if you talk to him, obviously, he's going to turn around and say he made a fantastic tackle there and stopped me from getting in with a shot on goal. And my view of it is I've just nicked the ball in front of him and left him and got a shot in goal and the keeper saved it. Yeah. So you'll have <laughs> two different stories on that one. <laughs> And what was it like playing at the Dell? Because it was a little compact ground, wasn't it? It was, you know, like it was really tight. And uh, I can imagine that you got some really good atmospheres there. Because, I mean, I'm, it's a stadium that I never went to. You've been oh, to St really, Mary's. Yeah. Times, but yeah, but never went there. The atmosphere was amazing because you didn't need 50,000 in. Well, you couldn't get 50,000 in there anyway. But, yeah. like, you know, if it's packed solid, the atmosphere was brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it was good, yeah. And, you know, you played a number of teams in that stadium, both, you know, teams uh, domestically, but also teams like, well, IFK Gothenburg in the Swedish First Division. Let's have a look at this one you've got here. Yeah, I, uh, I was lucky enough to play in that game and score a goal, which was good. Um, I came on a sub yeah. and uh, scored the winner. But at, at the time... Whenever ever I played or a sub, I always seem to score. So. <laughs> yeah. 
That's absolutely superb. And, uh, you know, like, what's it like having your name in the local paper? I mean, you know, you obviously saved every single bit of, you know, press clipping that you had. Well, actually, it was my, my mum that saved them. Oh, um, so, yeah. it, it is good because it, it's brilliant. If you look back on them and you, and you see all the headlines, but what people don't see is the fact that I did finish off a lot of games by scoring the goals, but there was a hell of a lot of good players playing with me, whether I was playing for Southampton or Bournemouth. I had good players around me, so I was lucky, really. Yeah, that's it. So that was a thrilling victory for Southampton. And, you know, that was a very late winner. But, uh, Tony, you never told me something. And this is something that I am learning just today. You played in a cup final at Wembley, is that right? Well, no, I didn't play, unfortunately. But Uh, on rummaging through the loft and finding the programme... I did notice that uh, I was in the pen pictures. So although I didn't play all the sub on on the day, I must have been in the plans leading up to the final. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had my pen picture in the in the program. So there we are. That's the um, that's inside the uh, Wembley souvenir program, and there you can see uh, Tony Funnel there. It says made an impact an, an early impact during Saints promotion run last season when he scored eight league goals in only 15 appearances four as a substitute you know you were the epitome of a super sub by the looks of it another product of the youth scheme he signed professional forms in June 1977 after impressive performances as a striker in the combination league uh, born in Eastbourne and uh, you know that is quite incredible, really, to be involved. But, you know, you've actually been out on the hallowed turf then because I presume that you would have been warming up with them, though, right? No, unfortunately, I um, I went up to watch a game, yeah. but uh, I wasn't sub and uh, I didn't go on the pitch, I'm afraid. Uh, um, I, we, we went up for the weekend. Mm. And uh, what was funny, that weekend, the, uh, the first team stayed at the Royal Garden Hotel. Yeah, which was where um, the England team celebrated winning the World Cup. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. And then I was staying in a smaller hotel down the road with oh, the other great. players that weren't in the in the um, in the cup final squad. But um, after the match, I'd arranged to meet up with some of the players, uh, my roommate Peter Wells, and a few of the other lads, and. Uh, we was going to meet up and have a, a night out in London, mm. which we did, and it, it went really well. Um, and then as the evening wore on, I said, well, I better sort a cab out, lads, because I've got to get back to my hotel, mm. for 40 Towers. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing Wellesie said to me was, you ain't staying there. I've got a spare room in my room, my spare bed in my room. He said, you're staying at the Royal Garden Hotel, mate. Oh, said, nice. That'd do for me. Yeah. So um, I've stayed there, and then the next morning I'm down at the table having the most amazing breakfast with the players. And uh, Big Murray walks in. Oh, yeah. And uh, he sees me in there, and uh, he calls me over, and he said, ah, bonny lad, he says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I said, I was out with the boys last night and um, it was too late. I couldn't get a taxi. Mm. He went, oh, right. So I've gone back to finish off my breakfast. Yeah. And he's obviously thinking, does that lad think I'm stupid? City centre of London, he can't get a cab. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That was it. He sort of gave me a little dressing down to say, you know, I know you shouldn't be here. You know you shouldn't be here. But that was it. And, no more was said. And what did the night out involve? You know, a few drinks? Yes, just a few, yeah. Yeah, just a few, you know. I mean, yeah. It's very professional though, right? Oh, very, very professional, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. So um, the next uh, photo that, we, that we've got, now this, this is a cracking photo here. There you go, Boxing yeah. 1980. Charlie George has just made it two all at White Hart Lane, and the match finished four all with Steve Moran getting Saints fourth in the 87th minute. Not mm. long after um, 
the League Cup final, yeah. I got a bad pelvic injury and I was out for quite a few months. And uh, when the transfer came around, myself and a, probably half a dozen more of the reserve players, yeah. uh, we got put on the transfer list. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, basically, they sold off um, about half a dozen of us and uh, made a few hundred grand. And uh, that helped them get Charlie George. Oh, wow. Ex-England and Arsenal player. And at the same time, Steve Miranda scored a couple of goals in that game. He was coming through. So, obviously, I didn't want to leave. And none of us did, really. But um, I sort of, lay, when you later on think about it, Laurie McMenemy was actually doing the right decision for the football club. Yeah. He sold us. He was able to get some money in the bank, buy a top quality international player. He had other youngsters coming through. And, you know, in those days, that's what it was. It was like a conveyor belt. Yes. More youngsters come through. Lads get sold off to different clubs. You know, and, and that's how, you know, Southampton were, you know, they afforded to get um, Charlie George, Tim McDougall, Phil Boyer, who else? Kevin Keegan. Mm. They got Mickey Shannon back. Wow. And, and they did it by bringing in players, selling players, and using the money. So, how many old, um, you know, how many of the players that you used to play with do you still communicate with now? I mean, obviously, I know you, uh, you know, communicate with Harry. Of course, he was at Bournemouth um, in the early sort of nineteen eighties. Um, but you know, do you sort of maintain regular, uh, you know, communication with the ones that are still around? Of course. Yeah, the ones that are still around. Uh, like when I was at Southampton, Forbes, Phillips, and Masters, mm. the longest name in football <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's still he, around he, he lives in Burwood on shirt sales I think that one would be quite an expensive one <laughs> yeah that's right yeah um yeah he never he never bought um shirts for his children with a name <laughs> on the back <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he's, he's in Burwood he's a property developer yeah and uh Paul Arnold he was at um Southampton when I was there he um, he's a painter and decorator. He's got his own business, so I, I still see them too. Um, from the Bournemouth uh, lads, I see um, Keith Williams and Jock Cunningham. Oh yeah, Brian O'Donnell, unfortunately, until he passed away last week. Uh, Craig Houston is a, a young lad that was uh, in the youth team when I was there. I still see him because he beats me at golf. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's a few lads that are still around. But it was mm. funny, years ago, when you played football for the different teams, you played for, for, with them and obviously you got on well with lads. But when you left, there was no mobile phones in those days. I suppose, so, yeah. Very so different. It wasn't so easy to keep contact with people. Yeah, you'd have to become pen pals or something. I mean, it's yeah, that's quite crazy to think yeah, about. It. No Facebook. Yeah, blimey. So unless you unless you had an actual landline number, yeah, you lost you lost contact with people. Bizarre, bizarre. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And uh, I don't know if this is what it was like back in the day, but I noticed when you watch a lot of Premier League matches, even in the Championship, often Sky Sports they have a camera in the tunnel. And you see the two teams lining up, albeit not now like with everything that's going on with coronavirus, but there are players that have these friendly exchanges with the opposition and they always seem to be best friends. Um, but maybe, are you saying that maybe because you had to make an effort to maintain these friendships back in the day, there wasn't so much of that pally pallyness with the opposition because, you know, by default, you just wouldn't know as many of them? No. It, well, I think when... Um... When you uh, moved on, like when I moved on and I went to one club, one of my other mates went to another club, and then you played in that same division, you'd meet up with them then. Yeah. But what was funny, you were saying about when you're standing in the uh, in the tunnel 
you you said yourself you hadn't been to the Dell to watch a match, so you wouldn't even no way would you have been behind the scenes. No. You you come out of the dressing room and there's a little <laughs> corridor, honest to God, and then there was twenty wooden steps yeah. to get down to a concrete tunnel of about ten yards, and then you was out on the pitch. That's mad. Yeah. They literally walked down some steps first. That's bizarre. Amazing. So, yeah, so that was your Southampton career that, you know, came to an end then. And after that, it was Gillingham, wasn't it? Yes, we hear about that next week. Looking forward, looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, Tony kept up his goal scoring form there. So we will um, we will find out what happened at Gillingham. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Another team that I suppose you could call them a, a southern team just about, can't you? Yeah, just about, yeah. Just about, you know, you, well, you get the reports on Meridian South East, so yeah, we'll, we'll take that. But anyway, Tony, thank you very much for coming on to the Funnel Flashback once again, and we'll see you in the next video up the cherries. Cheers.